Last year, I shared this little project with you all, where the intention was to make a PC case that was easy to just pick up and throw into a backpack. And you guys seemed to love that video. With tons of engagement and good feedback, I knew I had to get back to this topic eventually. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the backpack-friendly PC case V2.0. This case offers not only better cooling options, but also room for a longer and thicker graphics card, in addition to now supporting a SFX power supply, which many of you guys requested. Its minimalistic and clean exterior works really well in a permanent on-desk setup, but thanks to its compact design and discreet built-in handle in the back, it also works really great as a portable PC that you can just pick up with ease and throw into your backpack as needed, making this case a particularly good choice for those who change locations often. The case design was created using Shaper 3D, and features a sandwich-style layout where you can fit 2.5-slot graphics cards up to 295mm and also CPU coolers up to 55mm. The print volume required to print this case is 215 by 180 mm so this case is printable on not all but most of the popular printers out there, and the rough amount of filament needed for the case is about 2 kilograms. Assembly-wise, the case is mainly put together using M3 threaded inserts and M3 by 10mm screws, and will also need a soldering iron for melting in place the inserts. Some details that I've started to add in my more recent projects are these small triangles that indicate which holes require threaded inserts, as it speeds up the assembly process by a lot. A new detail on this project is this bigger triangle and number. It's not a part number, it actually refers to the total amount of smaller triangles found on the part or how many inserts are needed in total. Additionally, over on printables there's also a full detailed written overview of print settings, threaded inserts and full assembly instructions from start to finish to ensure a smooth building experience. The first step of the assembly is to add threaded inserts to all of our parts. Here we just look for those small triangles and add the necessary amount of threaded inserts. The front exterior half of the case is actually marked with the number 0, as it's one of the bigger main parts. It's there just to save you some time, while on the rear half of the case, it's a different number. The rear half of the case is printed with these custom support pillars as part of the model. These can simply be cut away and are designed to be easily snapped off by simply twisting your pliers. At the top of the supports, there's also a tiny bridge added mainly to support the two holes above it, which would otherwise be printed in mid-air. The holes can carefully be poked out with a thin screwdriver or similar. For the GPU mount, we have two sets of inserts. The innermost is for 2.5 slot cards, while the other pair is for 2 slot cards to ensure that the fan is as close as possible to the side air intake. These two inserts in the lower mount can be a little tricky to install due to having to push them in at a slight angle. However, the rest of them are very straightforward. Once we've checked that all inserts are in the correct holes, we can move on to the actual assembly. Starting with the two internal panels, we want to lay them flat like this and secure them together using two M3 screws from the inside of the motherboard mount. Next up, we want to place the internal panel in between the front and rear half. We want to pay special attention to this little slot in the panel, which should align with this little slot in the front half. The internal panel can then be secured in place from the outside using M3 screws, two from the top, two from the back and finally four more screws from the bottom. The part joints are still a little wobbly, so we want to stiffen it up by pushing in place these joining pieces on both sides of the model. These should be quite tight, so if necessary use something light to gently tap them into place. Moving on to the rear of the case, we can grab the carrying handle, which can be securely attached directly to the motherboard mount first by sliding it into the slot, followed by two screws from the side and two more screws from the inside of the motherboard mount, to ensure a super secure fit to be able to hold the weight of the entire system. Are you enjoying this video so far? If you do, why not consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on exciting new projects in the future. Back to the project, we can now install our top exhaust fans. These are 120mm slim fans that are 15mm thick, and not the standard 25mm thick ones. Over to the PCIe riser cable, the one used here is 300mm long, and has an angled connector on the GPU side. Due to space limitations, the cable has to be tucked in underneath the motherboard mount before the motherboard can be installed. The motherboard in this case is an older B460i with an i5-10400 and a Noctua L9i which is only 37mm tall, but it's possible to fit air coolers up to 55mm in this case which is just tall enough to also support AMD's Wraith Stealth stock cooler at 54mm, so a low budget build is also fully possible with this case. The SFX power supply used in this particular build is a 
Corsair SF-1000 which is completely overkill for the purpose but was the only one I had available at the time of building this. The mounting bracket has to be installed first before the power supply can be dropped in place. But wait. Due to limited space we also need to pre-attach all necessary cables like for example our motherboard power and CPU power. It's also wise to install the 12mm power button at this point before the space gets too crowded. And remember to also prepare the GPU power and feed it through to the other side. Before we can tuck it all into place, we also have to add a C13 to C14 power extension and feed the female plug over to the other side. The SFX bracket can then be mounted to the internal panel using two screws. We can now close up this side of the case with our two-part side panel, where one panel is called side number one and the other panel is called side number two. The top part of each panel has this little 45 degree edge, which actually hooks onto the inner top edge of the case. So the panel has to be attached top first, then we push in the bottom and repeat the same for the other half. To keep the mounts invisible, each half secures to the main body from the underside by using two screws. We can now flip the case around and move over to our GPU, which in this case is a 286mm long 2.5 slot Gigabyte 3070. Here we want to first install the GPU power cables followed by the riser cable before tucking it all nicely into place. The upper part of the GPU bracket can be clamped in place with this little plastic piece and a screw, while the lower mount requires just a screw. I also want to mention this little height adjustable GPU support that works like a screw and can be adjusted simply by rotating it. And it can be mounted here or here depending on our GPU length. We can now grab our C14 socket extension and slide it into the slot open in the main body and secure it in place using an M3 screw. To close up the gap we can then slide in this little locking piece to secure the power socket from the other side as well. The system is now pretty much ready to go and all we need to do is to close it up. First we want to slide in place these two top exhaust vent panels above each fan. Now all that's left to do is to add in those last two side panels and our case is now complete. With its clean look and sturdy carrying handle I think this thing came out great. Regarding the carrying handle, since it's intended to carry around some quite expensive hardware, use the handle at your own risk and please follow the recommended print settings to ensure it's up for the challenge. Also I highly recommend printing the case in PETG or another temperature resistant material. Speaking of temperature, let's take a look at some performance numbers. Starting with a Cinebench multi-core stress test on the i5-10400 with a Noctua L9i, the maximum temperature reached was 72 degrees with an average in the high 60s. Moving over to the GPU, when running a Fermark stress test, the maximum temperature reached on the 3070 was 79 degrees. And during some FPS gaming, the temperature maxed out at 77 degrees. So it's not super low, but still within comfortable ranges considering the compactness of the case. Personally, I could not be happier with how this case turned out. Apart from some minor stringing challenges, I really enjoyed making this project and I think it overall is a nice improvement from the first version. And I'd love to hear your feedback too, down in the comments section. If you're interested in building this project for yourself or for someone you know, check out the printables link in the video description below where you can also find detailed written printing and building instructions to ensure that you have a smooth experience. Did you know that from today and for the next 30 days all my printables models will have a 30% discount? Check them out to see if this or another one of my projects piques your interest. If you enjoyed watching this project, feel free to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on new exciting projects in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again.